Good morning, one and all. Today we are going to discuss about microanatomy of liver. As we are already done with the gross anatomy, so today's learning objectives would be at the end of class, the students should be able to describe the microscopic anatomy of the liver and you should be able to draw the diagram of histology of liver with proper labelings. So uh, about this gross anatomy, we are already done with where you all know the liver is largest gland in the body. It has both exocrine and endocrine, a small endocrine part and the two principal lobes. Anatomically, we have right and left lobe. And this liver as such is covered by a capsule called as glissens capsule, which is a connective tissue actually with collagen fibers and cells and uh, location and functions you have, we have already done with the gross anatomy if you want to revise please go through the video which I, I have already shared earlier as the gross anatomy of the liver so in microanatomy what is the structural organization in the liver if we say we can divide the structure into two parts one is the stroma and one is the parenchyma stroma is always the connective tissue part which includes the capsule the glissens capsule we call it from the capsule we will be having small small trabeculae which is going within the tissue and as such the cells and all of the parenchyma is uh, supported by a network a framework of some connective tissue called as reticular network so stroma usually of any gland would be having a capsule trabeculae and reticular framework in addition the very important part is the parenchyma the parenchyma here consists of the hepatocytes and associated blood vessels in the form of small arteries venules or sinusoids very important here and bile ducts they together are forming the hepatocytes besides all these three rest all comes under connective tissue stroma so as such uh, actually if we take the tissue of the liver and go for its processing and staining you will find it has a unit the morphofunctional unit of the liver is actually based upon the distribution of branches of the portal vein and hepatic artery within the organ and pathway of the blood flow so uh, this actually is divided into three parts theoretically we call it into three parts we divide the liver as uh, the units of the liver can be divided as classical liver lobule the portal lobule and liver acinus it is actually on the basis of distribution of branches of the portal vein and hepatic artery within the organ and pathway of the blood flow we have three different units most importantly in histology we read about uh, this classical liver lobule okay so we can see in the diagram here we have these hexagonal structures here if you take the liver tissue particularly in animals not in human beings if you take the liver of human beings you won't find this classical hexagonal structure of the tissue but this classical hexagonal tissue is present in other animals like if you take the pig slide slide of the liver of pig you will find the classical hepatic lobules or liver lobule where we have uh, pota hepatis at the corners six corners or sometimes four or five corners and center is occupied by central vein so tissue around the central vein is called as the classic hepatic lobule but if you take a triangular tissue of the three classic hepatic lobules in which the center is occupied by a portal triad then this tissue is called as this part of the hepatic uh, tissue is called as portal lobule okay and third one is when we have adjacent part of the two hepatic uh, classical lobules which the central part is occupied by the adjacent wall of two hepatic lobules okay this will be your uh, called as liver acinus so this is functionally important so these three we'll discuss gradually first we'll start with the this one the hepatic classic hepatic lobule so as such the classic hepatic lobule is hexagonal in shape it is a classical lobule and it is used as in the traditional description of the liver parenchyma organization if you take the liver parenchyma the hexagonal lobe somewhere you will find hexagonal in shape but not exactly in the human beings but more in the lower animals it composed of what it composed of it composed of number of hepatic cells or hepatocytes or liver cells arranged in the form of plates or cords radiating outward from the central vein we can see here this is just a diagrammatic representation the hepatic lobule 
module is more or less hexagonal where the center is occupied by central vein. Now, if you see here, this is just a diagrammatic representation. You can see this pink things. These are all pink or you can say pitch color things. These are all hepatic cells. I'll show you in other diagrams also. And here in between these the white white things is all liver sinusoids. So uh, in liver sinusoids, the blood is flowing towards the central vein. This at the corners of the hexagon. Here we have hepatic lobules at the corner of the uh, hepatic classic hepatic lobule here we have these portal triads portal triad consists of three structures we'll discuss so from this portal vein the blood is coming and the hepatic artery the blood is coming towards the central vein okay so these are coming through the sinusoids and from this portal triad from this port portal triad ultimately the blood is going towards the central vein that is they are showing and if you see the green thing, green is actually the uh, bile duct, a branch of bile duct. So it is receiving bile duct here. So arterial blood, venous blood, it is going towards the central vein. And bile duct is getting the bile from the hepatocytes towards it. So direction of bile duct is different. This is very beautiful uh, GIF or you can say the animation image where it is showing what is the direction of blood flow. Okay, the venous blood and arterial blood, they are going towards the central vein. Whereas the uh, bile duct, the bile, you can say, is coming towards the bile duct. Okay. Now, what is actually these hepatocytes arranged like? You can see, suppose this is your central vein in this diagram. And from this central vein, these are cords of the hepatocytes. Each one of these cells, they are called as hepatocytes. They are radiating from the central vein. And in between the plates or cords of hepatocytes, we have these uh, sinusoids. You can see they are lined by these cells, endothelial lined sinusoids. Okay, so these stacks of anastomosing plates of hepatocytes, usually one, one cell thick, separated by the anastomosing system of uh, sinusoids that perfuse the cells with the mixed portal and arterial blood. Each lobule actually measures approximately 2 by, 7, 2 by 0.7 millimeter, they say. At the center of lobule is the central vein. This is forming the center of the lobule. And the central vein is also called as terminal hepatic venule into which the sinusoids ultimately they drain. So sinusoids are intercommunicating with each other. They are lined by fenestrated endothelium actually. And this um, hepatocyte cords, it can be single plate or it can be double plate also. And at the six corners of the classical hepatic lobule, we have portal triads. Okay, so these are sinusoids. We can see here this purple purple thing is all sinusoids at the corners of the hepatic lobule classical hepatic lobule we have three important structures branch of hepatic artery branch of portal vein and branch of bile duct so bile duct is getting the bile and artery and vein they're opening into sinusoids which are ultimately going towards the central vein okay this is central vein here and central vein is occupying the center part of the classical hepatic lobule this you have to remember this is portal triad. So this is uh, an HNE staining actually of liver, low power 10x, where you can see that the diagrams which we are drawing for ourselves to understand, that is approximately uh, different actually. It is not same as that which we are sh seeing in the image, uh, in the these 10x. Okay, see in 10x, you are just able to see these dot dot things. These dot dot things are all hepatocytes. This reddish color, this light stained area and then reddish color inside. Reddish color is actually RBCs and light stained area. This is all your central vein, margin of central vein where we have openings of these white, white or light stained sinusoids. So on one area, we have the central vein. Central vein can be easily identified because from its periphery, we have radiating cords of hepatocytes. And as you go towards the ends in pig liver actually and most likely this is a liver of pig not a human you can see the septa is clear the septation is not clear in the human slides okay so you can see these connective tissue septas are there which is forming boundary of a lobule and and it's one corner it is not necessary that all the at all the corners you'll find portal trial but in some or the other you may find 
we have a large uh, luminal structure you can see with a lumen thin wall structure having dot dot endothelial cells very thin wall with rbc's in the center this is vein besides it we have two structures the small both are of same size one is a bit light stained one is dark, darkly stained light stained with flat cells that will be your artery dark stained area with cuboidal epithelium that is your bile duct so this is a branch of bile duct branch of hepatic artery and branch of portal vein okay this is a classical picture of nx view of h and e staining of tissue of liver now this is something very interesting this is your electron microscope image how it appears see this is central vein and here we have cords of hepatocytes they are radiating from the central vein and in between we have these connective tissue where these veins are distributing veins they are just running okay and together these vein they will form some uh, open into central vein central vein will open into some subglobular vein which ultimately will open into hepatic veins okay these are plates of hepatocytes beautiful image now portal triad in detail what do you mean by portal triad these are actually also called as portal areas or portal canal where you can see we have light stained connective tissue so in between these darkly stained hepatocytes well defined hepatocytes you will find some light stained area with loosely arranged connective tissue in between we have three structures okay one is the vein you can see easily the i mean the lumen is not very much well defined rounded it is somewhat uh, wavy with thin wall thin wall very thin wall very small amount of muscular tissue but you are able to see the endothelium clearly that is a vein the large of these three structures larger of all these three structures with clot in the center this is your portal vein now out of these two structures you can see one is like in which we have low columnar epithelium with uh, these rounded nuclei more towards the base usually it is cuboidal epithelium but sometimes in larger ducts you may find low columnar also this is your bile duct and another structure you can see typical artery arrangement the muscular wall is there smooth muscle with a flattened spindle shaped nuclei and endothelium in the inner wall this is your artery so branch of hepatic artery branch of portal vein and branch of bile duct they are the constituents of portal triad okay which is present in between the classical hepatic lobules usually at the corner theek okay? hai next is again a very good image just high power you can say 40x you can see here portal vein hepatic artery and bile duct and these are all hepatocytes around it now what are these hepatocytes actually they are polygonal cells having multiple surfaces this is very huge very uh, high power image actually you may not see like this in 10x not at all the image which i showed you earlier that is more of like um, 10x okay so just to understand here see this is a central vein lined by endothelium on uh, outer side of this we have these plates or cords of hepatocytes radiating radiating from the central vein and these hepatocytes are having multiple surfaces they are in a conjugation with each other they are very closely packed with each other and uh, they can be binucleated also they have large euchromatic you can see euchromatic nuclei with uh, the, this nucleolus is very much clear with greeny cytoplasm abundant greeny cytoplasm that stains well with acid and basic dyes reflecting abundance of various cellular constituents very important functions these hepatocytes are having they have surfaces usually they classify it like the uh, multiple surfaces they have the lateral surface basal surface and apical surface these hepatocytes is diagrammatic representation of see here this is a nucleus with nucleoli and abundant of uh, structures are present within the cell cytoplasm towards the surfaces you can see one of the surface few of the surfaces are in uh, contact with the sinusoids right the hepatocytes plates they lie just adjacent to sinusoids that surface bears these villi and other surface uh, which is in contact with the adjacent hepatocyte in between those two hepatocytes again few will i are present and they enclose and very important bile ductule here or you can say canaliculi this is forming biliary canaliculus 
okay so bellini canaliculus will be present in two or more surfaces and uh, two or more surfaces may have usually have hepatic uh, you have uh, microvilli which is facing towards the sinusoids okay all cytoplasmic organelles are very well developed the cell membrane facing a bile canaliculi and perisinusoidal space usually forms microvilli we can see these microvilli here microvilli here okay hepatocytes are how they are arranged they are located in flat irregular plates or cords that are uh, arranged radially like spokes of a wheel around a branch of hepatic vein called as central vein or central venule or terminal hepatic venule since it really has a structure of a venule so we have these cords of hepatocytes radiating in some you can see they are binucleated also well defined centrally placed nuclei okay these are cords now in between the cords we are able to see this light stained area where you can see lined by endothelial cells very clearly seen here endothelium in few things in few areas see the endothelium very nicely seen beautiful image so this is your actually the sinusoidal space and you can see this space is opening into this vein central vein each hepatic plate in adults is one cell thick and in children less than 6 years of age usually two rows of hepatocytes may be present and in between the plates we have these sinusoidal capillaries or sinusoids now just an image to show you the central vein this is sinusoid and these hepatic uh, plates sheets of hepatic plates this is actually the tissue or the classical picture of histology of liver this is again the electron microscopic view you can see bile canaliculi how it is running on the hepatocytes the hepatocytes rows these are hepatocytes and in between hepatocytes we have these spaces called as sinusoids okay on on surface towards the sinusoids see the microvilli beautifully seen the microvilli towards the canaliculi they have some microvilli and towards the sinusoids they will be having microvilli so now what are these sinusoids now we can see here in between the hepatic plates uh, these are uh, the kind of capillaries only you can see the larger than capillaries convent larger than conventional capillaries and less irregular in, and less regular in shape sorry so uh, these are larger than conventional capillaries and less regular in shape lined by fenestrated endothelial cells there is no continuation of the uh, endothelial cells some gaps are there so lined by thin fenestrated endothelial cells and lacks a classical basement membrane okay this basement membrane is mostly absent uh, in these sinusoids except in few areas the space now you can see here this is the sinusoid this is the liver sinusoid which is going and opening into central vein lined by these endothelial cells these are the endothelial cells now the space between the endothelium and the hepatic cords this space is called as this light pink space is called as space of disse the space between the endothelium of the sinusoids and the hepatic plates is called as space of disse okay class this a uh, very big diagrammatic representation these are hepatic cords hepatic cords here in between the two hepatic cords we have a space lined by fenestrated endothelial cells this is these are endothelial cells these i'll discuss later on kafer cells so here these are endothelial cells and this is your sinus okay now in between the hepatic cords and sinusoids we have this space this is called as space of disse this one this is sinusoid this is sinus sinusoidal endothelial cells and hepatocyte plates and this is space of disse which contains these stellate cells okay hepatic sinusoids differ from other sinusoids in that a second type of cell the stellate sinusoidal macrophages or kuffer cells are present as a regular lining of these uh, sinusoids okay now what is kuffer cells kuffer cells are also called as kuffer brobeckis cells they are specialized macrophages or a part of phagocytic system first discovered by carl well well him one kuffer in 1876 now these kuffer cells are present you can see here they are present in the lining epithelium of uh, 
sinusoids. These are endothelial cells, but they are not lining completely. But these cells, they say, they lie in between. Actually, the electron microscopic study has shown that these lies in contact. Their processes lies in contact of the endothelial cells, and their processes may enter into space of decay. Okay, so these Kupffer cells are actually not in the lining completely, but their processes are there. Okay, the scanning microscope and uh, microscopic study and transmission electron microscopy clearly show that these Kupffer cells they form part of the lining of the sinusoid. Previously, they had been described as lining on the luminal surface of endothelial cells, but this older histologic description was actually probably based on the fact that processes of these cells occasionally overlap endothelial processes on the luminal side. So these do not form junctions with the endothelial cells actually, but their processes are often seen to span the sinusoidal lumen and may even partially occlude it. Okay, and it has been found that these uh, Kupffer cells cytoplasm may show the presence of red cell fragments or iron in the form of ferritin, which suggests that they form uh, they may be involved in the final breakdown of some damaged or senile red blood cells. Okay, so this is that's why this Kupffer cells are important because they are macrophages. Okay, so we can see here this is the lining uh, endothelium actually here, and here we have this is endothelial cells, and these bigger cells will be Kupffer cells. So you cannot see in 10x, but you have to go for 40x to find out the Kupffer cells. Okay. The scanning microscope, as I mentioned, uh, they show that these form part of the lining of sinusoids. Okay, I already mentioned this Kupffer cells. Uh, again, to show you, just these is the uh, these are the endothelial spaces where in between, see, hepatocytes have very well defined round nuclei with the central nucleolus, but some darkly stained nuclei which is outside the hepatocytes towards the sinusoidal space, but they are bigger. They are not flat. Okay, these are Kupffer cells. Now, what is perisinusoidal space of Dessay? Now, as I mentioned here, this light pink, the space in between the endothelium of the sinusoids and hepatocytes, hepatocytes cords, is called as space of Dessay. This space actually contains microvilli of the hepatocytes, adjacent hepatocytes, microvilli will be there. It contains some plasma, blood plasma, and processes of Kupffer cells. These Kupffer cells they are present, sending their processes. Okay, and also some type of uh, adipose cells called as lipocytes or eto cells okay so these eto cells also called as telate cells or fat cells they are present in the space of tissue in between the hepatocyte cords and uh, endothelium and they have dendritic dendritic processes which comes in contact with these microvilli of the hepatocytes and endothelial cells. Their main function is storage of vitamin A, synthesis of extracellular collagen, and they play a key role in the development and progression of hepatic fibrosis. So they are called as telate cells or eto cells. Okay, so this is uh, very these are important cells which you should know, but these cells you cannot see in HNE staining 10x also. Okay. So you have, but you have to know the function and you have to know these, what these cells are actually because multiple choice they, uh, can, in multiple choice questions, they can be asked. So stelose, stelate cells or eto cells, they are the part of space of decay. Okay, they're fat cells. Now how blood is flowing in the liver parenchyma because blood vessels, they form the part of the parenchyma. So what happens here, if we start with lobules, we have classical lobule. Okay, at the periphery of classical lobule, we have these uh, vessels. Okay, so they are called as interlobular vessels in portal triad or portal canal. From these interlobular vessels, the vein and the blood is going towards the artery or vein, whatever their blood is going towards the sinusoids. From the sinusoids, it is going towards the central vein. You all know from the central vein, see the central veins, the central veins they form sublobular veins. Okay, sublobular veins and from sublobular vein they form hepatic veins and ultimately hepatic veins they open into inferior vena cava. So you will find number of veins in between the tissues or hepatic lobules when you are getting the section. Okay, this is how the blood is coming towards the central vein. Okay, 
from here arterial and venous blood both they are coming towards the central vein from the central vein it will go to the sublobular vein and ultimately hepatic veins and inferior vena cava canaliculi what is the bile canaliculi this is very beautiful image you can see here we have these classical hepatic lobules so till now we are describing everything on the basis of classical hepatic lobule so at the ends of the classical hepatic lobule we have these porta uh, portal triad or portal canal which is actually the contains a branch of hepatic artery bile duct and portal vein so branch of bile duct is present okay so now in these plates are hepatic plates as i mentioned earlier now in between the hepatic plates as i told you earlier we have biliary canaliculi so small canal formed by opposed grooves in the surface of adjacent hepatocytes in between the two hepatocytes is a groove in between form complete loop around four sides of hexagonal hepatocytes so these are actually they are communicating with each other forming a loop around four sides of hexagonal hepatocytes and they are lined by these small small canaliculi they will be lined by small cells called as cholangiocytes bile duct or biliary tract is usually lined by the small endothelial cells you can say they are called as cholangiocytes the cells they will be cuboidal more cuboidal in bigger or larger uh, bile duct system but in canaliculi the, the cells are very small okay so the location is of canaliculi is in between these hepatocytes uh, in between the hepatocytes adjacent wall of the hepatocytes okay we can see here i told you already this is your one bile canaliculi here one is here biliary canaliculi okay so these canaliculi they will join together these are actually the smallest branch of the biliary tree into which hepatocyte secretes bile because they are in just contact with the hepatocytes they will secrete the bile here and from here these uh, the wall of the two uh, adjacent hepatocytes they have microvilli into extending into the biliary canaliculi and this canali this canaliculi it gets a bile and bile again this flows towards the bile duct tube which is present in the portal triad okay so direction of flow of bile will be away from the center of the uh, hepatic lobule classical hepatic lobule so this is called as centrifugal the bile flow is centrifugal away from the central vein whereas the blood flow is centripetal towards the central vein and you can remember you have to remember that vein as well as artery both they pour their blood into sinusoids so liver sinusoids are different from others here because they contain both the venous as well as arterial blood fine now these bile canaliculi another very important thing i should mention here canal of herring what happens here bile canaliculi which is formed uh, in between the hepatocytes the bile is coming here now in some point of view in the liver uh, lobule or hepatic lobule only before opening into the interlobular duct this canal they uh, bile ductule they are forming a canaliculi or you can say bile canaliculi transform into short canals called as canals of herring which is lined by two types of cells here so the part of the bile canaliculi which is lined by both the hepatocytes as well as small other cells called as cholangiocytes so both hepatocytes and cholangiocytes are lining this canal that canal is called as canal of herring and this canal is the smallest and most proximal tributary of the biliary tree containing cholangiocytes it often is involved in same diseases that affects the small bile ducts so if small bile ducts are involved so this area this canal will also be involved in similar way they say that's why this is the smallest and most proximal part of the biliary tree canal of herring another very important thing is that this contains these small cholangiocytes they are actually serving as reservoir of liver progenitor cells you can see here the stem cell nike so these are like stem cells so what happens here these uh, bile canaliculi these uh, the cells which are lining the canal of herring they uh, are seem to be like uh, they are proposed that the hepatic stem cells nike is present either in the canals of herring or in its vicinity this hypothesis was supported by the appearance of liver cell precursors near the canals of herring in most of the pathologic conditions characterized by extensive damage of hepatocytes 
these cells could migrate and differentiate into either hepatocytes or bile duct cells. Recently, the three-dimensional structure of uh, ductular reactions in liver necrosis suggests that small cholangiocytes lining these canals proliferate extensively and migrate into the parenchyma of the liver. Therefore, it has been concluded that the canal of having consists of or harbors specific hepatic stem cells. Lab studies say, uh, suggest that in the future, hepatic stem cells may ultimately have therapeutic use in the treatment of liver diseases. Okay. Now, coming to the next part of the morphofunctional unit, we are done with the classical hepatic lobule. Now, we'll be discussing about the portal lobule and the liver SNS. So, these two are functional units, but anatomically or histologically, we are dealing with classical hepatic lobule in the structure of the liver actually. So what is the portal lobule as such? Portal lobule, it is actually, it emphasizes the exocrine function of the liver. There is bile secretion. Okay. So uh, what happens here? Morphologic excess of this will be interlobular bile duct. So what happens here? The uh, This portal lobule is actually the part of the three adjacent classic hepatic lobule. You can see here the triangular area. The corners or ends of this triangular area is occupied by the central vein. So you have to make an imaginary line connecting the three central veins and the center of this area will be having portal triad. So this portal triad having bile ductule, branch of hepatic artery, branch of hepatic uh, portal vein, they will occupy the central part of this triangular area which includes adjacent parts of the three classical hepatic lobules. The bile secreted by the triangular portions of classic hepatic lobules will drain into this bile duct. So this area will drain here, this area will drain here, and this area will drain here. Okay, so this is, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the GIF or in the animated image earlier. So this area will be drained into the hepatic duct of the center here in the center here, okay, bile duct in the center here. Now, what is the hepatic SNS? It is a structural unit that provides the best correlation between blood perfusion, metabolic activity, and liver pathology. It is somewhat actually lozenge shaped structure, uh, which includes the adjacent parts of two hepatic classical lobule. In portal uh, lobule, we have three classical lobule. Whereas in uh, hepatic SNS or it is also called as SNS of Rappaport, here we have adjacent tissues of the two classical hepatic lobule extending from its central vein, one of central vein to the other. So we can make out here that we have two axes here, short axis and long axis. Short axis is the axis which is uh, defined by terminal branches of the portal triad that lie along the border between two classical lobules, this one, this area actually in between the two classical lobules is called a short axis of hepatic SNS. Long SNS is a line drawn by extending from the two central vein, one central vein of the one classical lobule to the other. Okay, this is your long axis. This is short axis and this is long axis. So the area, a lozenge shaped area and represents the smallest functional unit of the hepatic parenchyma is your liver SNS. This um, actually long axis, short axis, what uh, is the thing here? In two dimensional view, the liver SNS occupies parts of the adjacent liver, uh, classic lobules. This concept allows a description of the exocrine secretory function of the liver comparable to that of the portal lobule. The hepatocytes in each liver SNS are described as being arranged in three concentric elliptical zones surrounding the short axis. So the one which is here just adjacent to the common border or common wall of two hepato, uh, hepatic uh, globule. This is called as zone 1. Around it on each side, adjacent parts, this is called as zone 2. And the one which is around or near the central vein on each side, this is called as zone 3. So zone 1 is the closest, you now see here in zone 1, the one area closest to the short axis. Here we can see we have branches of portal vein and hepatic artery, zone 1. So this is, uh, in this area, in this uh, zone 1, blood supply 
from penetrating branches of the portal vein and hepatic artery is there. This stone corresponds to the periphery of the classic lobule. And this is the area which is mostly the well oxygenated area. Okay, this is zone 1. As you go peripherally, zone 2, it is farther from short axis and closest to the ex, uh, terminal hepatic vein. This zone corresponds to the most central part of the classic hepatic lobule that surrounds the terminal hepatic vein. Zone 3, zone, two will, uh, zone 3 will be, this is a zone 3. This zone 3 is actually surrounding here. Okay, and this is zone 2. So as you go from uh, the common wall up to the central vein, zone 1, 2 and 3. Okay, the zonation is important in the description and interpretation of patterns of degeneration, regeneration and specific toxic effects. Okay, in the liver parenchyma relative to the degree or quality of vascular perfusion of the hepatic cells. So, if because the blood flow is maximum area, in, in this area, the zone 1 blood flow is maximum. So, this is the area which is mostly and the first to get involved in toxin damage. Zone 3, which is which will be around this central vein, okay, this zone will be having least blood supply. So, this is the area where we will be having more of ischemia or ischemic damage, okay. So, um, the distribution of liver damage resulting from ischemia and exposure to toxic substances can be explained using this zone interpretation, okay. So, ischemic damage will be most in the zone 3, this area. This area actually around the central vein and toxic damage will be more in the zone 1. Okay, so this is zone 1 is the first to receive oxygen, nutrients and toxins from the sinusoidal blood here. First to undergo damage due to toxins. First to show morphologic changes after bile duct occlusion. Zone 3, it has least blood supply. It is the first to show ischemic changes in conditions of reduced perfusion. And it is first to show fat accumulation also. Okay, now this is the image which I have. This is a picture actually I have drawn for your, uh, for you all so that you can understand how exactly you have to draw in your records and in exam. Okay, so one by one we can see here this is the central vein. This is like I'm not, I've not shown completely classical hepatic lobule boundaries because usually we have uh, the slides of uh, human liver so where we have randomly we can make out but we cannot make out exactly so this is your central vein lined by thin uh, small cells you can see endothelial cells and small uh, rbc's inside this is uh, low power view actually so from this central vein so you start from one area you start drawing one central vein from there you start drawing these polygonal cells called as hepatic uh, cells or hepatocytes or arranged in the form of cords or plates somewhere one somewhere two and somewhere you'll find one nuclei and in some you may find two nuclei also binucleated see here this one okay so they are radiating cords so in between the cords we have light stained areas they are called as uh, sinusoids yeah, these are sinusoids and at the ends of these you can see this is central vein as you go to a power 40x you may find in triad, we have branch of portal vein, we have branch of hepatic artery and we have branch of bile duct. So this is how you have to draw. Okay. So please go through. If you have not uh, gone through the gross anatomy till now, again, you can revise the gross anatomy. My videos are available over there. And after that, you can revise this histology part. And please do practice the diagram. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.